Melrose Transit, Suffolk Transit, and Williamsburg Area Transit Authority, I'd like to welcome you to the inaugural State of Transit Summit. Certainly what we have seen as, uh, as a result, uh, as Matt has mentioned, the impact of, of COVID, we've seen some community changes. And certainly, uh, in working with the TPO, we recognize that some people are working from home now today. So that has certainly changed uh, uh, commuting patterns. So we believe smaller vehicles, the ability to react to a changing marketplace through demand response, I think, will help feed the larger system as well as uh, having smaller vehicles that can be very efficient. Uh, when I was uh, and moved here and then looking into WADA and I got on the website and said, hey, okay, there's got to be an app, right? There's an app for everything. How do I, you know, plan a trip? And, and it, it brought me to the, the transit app. Like, transit app, what's that? And then, oh, I already have the transit app. I downloaded that years ago when I was in New York City. As just a big transportation network throughout the Hampton Roads area. And uh, as he did say, we are going to be really trying to start to dig into what it looks like to create a regional fare structure. And that will allow you to go from Suffolk Transit all the way out to HRT and to WADA off of the same fare structure versus knowing like, okay, I just paid this fare and now when I get on my next bus, I gotta pay this fare to find a way to make it feel more seamless and more connected for the people uh, in Hampton Roads. And so what we ended up doing in the end was hiring a transportation company to take folks to and from work who were not able to do so through their own vehicle. But that was not a scalable solution, right? The scalable solution that we were attempting to work with the two county, with the county and the city on, was reliable, efficient public transportation. The other thing they need to do is they need to get workers who support the hospitality industry to the place of work. Public transportation provides that, especially the latter. We have a lot of workers in the hotel and restaurant industry in Virginia Beach and quite frankly live in Suffolk and Chesapeake. They don't have cars, they only have one way to get to, uh, to work and that's through public transportation. I think the, the one thing I would say is um, that I think public transit has a stigma attached to it that it's for uh, people and I think even in a lot of the answers we've given it's really targeted at people who come from underserved communities who come from lower income backgrounds and it's certainly a important tool for those communities and a necessary one but I think trying to look at how we break that stigma around class. We may not rely on public transportation in this room, but we rely on somebody who relies on public transportation, whether that's a nurse at the hospital or that's somebody that um, interacts with you on a daily basis. So even though we may not rely on it, we rely on somebody who does. Thank you so much for spending time with us today, and we look forward to continuing this conversation. Thank you. what's going on.